counting, displaying text, and ending the game. We need a tool to store the value of our counted collectibles, and another tool to add to that value as we collect and count them. Let's add this tool to our player controller script. Select the player game object and open the player controller script for editing. Let's add a private variable to hold our count. This will be an int, as our count will be a whole number. We won't be collecting partial objects. And let's call it count. So in our game, we will first start with a count of zero. Then we will need to increment our count value by one when we pick up a new object. First, we need to set our count value to zero. As this variable is private, we don't have any access to it in the inspector. This variable is only available for use within this script, and as such, we will need to set its starting value here in the script. There are several ways we can set the starting value of count, but in this assignment, we will do it in the start function. In start, set our count to be equal to zero. Next, we need to add to count when we pick up our collectible game objects. We will pick up our objects in onTriggerEnter if the other game object has the tag pickup. So this is where we add our counting code. After setting the other game object's active state to false, we add our new value of count is equal to our old value of count plus one. There are other ways to add, count up, or increment a value when coding for Unity, but this one is very easy to understand, and this is the one that we're going to use in this assignment. Save this script and return to Unity. Now we can store and increment our count, but we have no way of displaying it. It would also be good to display a message when the game is over. To display text in this assignment, we will be using Unity's UI toolset to display our text and values. First, let's create a new UI text element from the Hierarchy's Create menu. Let's look at what we've added to the Hierarchy. We seem to have gotten more than we bargained for. We don't just have a UI text element, but we've also created a parent canvas element and an event systems game object. These are all required by the UI toolset. The single most important thing to know about these additional items is that all UI elements must be the child of a canvas to behave correctly. For more information on the UI tools, including the canvas and the event system, please see the information linked below. Rename the text element count text. So let's customize this element a bit. The default text is a bit dark. Let's make the text color white, so it's easier to see. The size and alignment are good. And let's add some placeholder text, count text. We want our text to display in the upper left of the screen when the game is playing. We can see that the UI text is currently displaying in the center of the screen in the game view. This is because the text element is anchored to the center of its parent which is, in this case, the canvas. It is worth noting that the transform component on UI elements is different from the other game objects in Unity. For UI elements, the standard transform has been replaced with the rect transform, which takes into account many specialized features necessary for a versatile UI system, including anchoring and positioning. For more information on the rect transform, please see the information linked below. One of the easiest ways to move the count text element into the upper left is to anchor it to the upper left corner of the canvas rather than to its center. To do this, open the Anchors and Presets menu by clicking on the button displaying the current anchor preset. When we re-anchor this text element, we also want to set the pivot and the position based on the new anchor. So we will hold down both the Shift and the Alt keys and then select the upper left corner button. That's done it, it's up in the corner. But now it looks budged up against the corner of the game view. Let's give it some space between the text and the edges of the screen. As we are anchored to the upper left corner of the canvas, and we've set our pivot to the upper left corner as well, the easiest way to give the text a little breathing room is to change the rect transform's 
pause x and pause y values. 10 and minus 10 seems about right, with some room around it, yet it's still up and out of the way. So let's wire up the UI text element to display our count value. Start by opening the player controller script for editing. Before we can code anything related to any UI elements, we need to tell our script more about them. The details about the UI toolset are held in what's called a namespace. We need to use this namespace, just as we are using Unity Engine and System Collections. So, to do this, at the top of our script, write using unityengine.ui. With this in place, we can now write our code. First, create a new public text variable called countText to hold a reference to the UI text component on our UI text game object. We need to set the starting value of the UI text's text property. We can do this in start as well. Write countText.text .text equals the string value of count colon space plus count to string. And we need the parentheses. Now this line of code must be written after the line setting our count value. Count must have some value for us to set the text with. Now we also need to update this text property every time we pick up a new collectible. So in on trigger enter, after we increment our count value, let's write again count text dot text equals count colon space plus count to string. Hmm. We've now written the same line of code twice in the same script. This is generally bad form. One way to make this a little more elegant is to create a function that does the work in one place, and we simply call this function every time we need it. Let's create a new function with void set count text, and then an empty set of parentheses and brackets. Now let's move one instance of this line of code into the function by cutting and pasting it. And in its place, let's put a line of code simply calling the function. Finally, let's replace the other line with a function call as well. Excellent. Save and swap back to Unity. Now we can see our player controller script has a new text property. We can associate a reference to our count text simply by dragging and dropping the count text game object into the slot. Unity will find the text component on the game object and correctly associate the reference. Now let's save, enter play mode, and test. Aha! Not only do we collect these objects, but we count them now. Let's exit play mode. We need to display a message when we have collected all of the cubes. To do this, we will need another UI text element. Again, using the hierarchy's create menu, make a new UI text element and rename it WinText. Note how this new UI text element is automatically added to our canvas. Again, as before, let's customize the values on the component. Let's color the text white so it is easier to see. Let's make the text a little larger. Let's try about 24. Lastly, let's adjust the alignment to center and middle. And again, let's add placeholder text. Win text. We want this text to display in the center of the game screen, but up a little so it doesn't cover the player game object. To do this, simply adjust the rec transforms pause y value, as by default, this UI text element is anchored to the center of the canvas. A value of about 75 feels good. Save the scene and swap back to the scripting editor. We need to add a reference to this UI text element. Create a new public text variable and call it winText. Now, Let's set the starting value for the UI text's text property. 
This is set to an empty string, or two double quote marks with no content. This text property will start empty. Then in the setCountText function, let's write if count is greater than or equal to 12, which is the total number of objects we have in the game to collect, then our winText.text equals you win. Save this script and return to Unity. Again, on our player, our player controller has a new UI text property. We can associate the component, again by dragging the WinText game object into the slot. Save the scene and play. So we're picking up our game objects. We're counting our collectibles. And we win! And as we can see, when we have collected 12 objects, we display the you win text. In the next and last assignment of this series, we will build the game and deploy it using a standalone player.